Hello everyone, I'm Terry Duke and welcome to my channel. Today, I'm going back on over a dozen videos made on Warband mods, with the single purpose of ranking all of them, 42 mods in total, from worst to best. But I don't think worst to best is actually the best way to describe it. It's more like mods I like the least to mods I like the most, because not only I have no authority whatsoever to decide which mod is actually best, but mostly I'm just some nerd sharing his opinions on YouTube. Now, because of how many mods I'm ranking, I'm gonna try and stay short and to the point. However, most of these mods have been reviewed at some point in one of my previous videos. I actually have a whole playlist on my channel called Duke Mods with all of my mod videos, so make sure to check it out either on my channel or by clicking the link in the description. I apologize in advance if your favorite mod doesn't make it to the top of the list, but uh, feel absolutely free to argue with me down below in the comments, and while you're at it, make sure to like and subscribe for more content. So, thank you for watching, and let's do this! In a previous video, I tried ranking my favorite mods based on key categories, such as Best Story Driven and Best Fantasy. But today, I'm ranking mods not on what they aim to achieve, but simply based on what I prefer. So what do I like in a urban mod? I like epic battles, I like an immersive atmosphere with good music, beautiful scenery, and cool weapons and armors. I also like new quests, you know, having different things to do. I like additions to the gameplay, like extra layers of kingdom management. So any mod that takes all of these boxes will most definitely make it amongst my favorites. So with that in mind, I not only ranked 42 mods in the order that I prefer, but to do that I had to divide the mods into a few pre-categories. At the lowest, we have Cool on the Surface, mods that bring some cool flashy things but don't inherently change anything to the core mechanics of the game and so the changes wear out quickly. Then, in Not My Taste, mods that are actually pretty good, but I don't personally like them for reasons I will get into as I rank them. After that, good but overwhelming, mods that are excellent but require some time to learn the new mechanics which are often complex. This is followed by the honorable mentions, mods that I really liked but don't fit in any given category. And we'll end up with the top picks, mods that I really enjoyed and found myself playing again and again. So now that you understand my reasoning, let's do this for real. So. Starting at number 42 in the Cool on the Surface category, we have Explorer. While it seems like a good idea to make a full-on RPG mod, where there's no world map and you have to actually travel the world to play the game, in practice I felt it was an unnecessary change to the game and just made it grindy as hell to get anywhere and get anything done. It's an interesting experiment for sure, but there's just not much to it besides that. 41. Dolobaria Honestly, there's just not much to this mod. Now, it takes a lot of boxes from total conversions, such as new world, weapons, and items. It's all cool, but there just wasn't anything really memorable about it besides the sword fighting animation, which is pretty awesome. But I discovered other mods that I had it as well since then, so Talibaria's main selling point just isn't unique. 40. Skyrim Civil War this mod is basically native warband, but in Skyrim, so we get the items, as well as the music, factions, and scenery from Skyrim, and it's all really well done, but in terms of new gameplay features, I haven't found any. It may seem cool to play in the world of Skyrim, but once you're past the atmosphere, the mod doesn't offer any changes to the gameplay whatsoever. 39. Calradia 1417 This mod takes us to Calradia in the Renaissance period, and that's pretty much it. New items, as well as the fighting animations I like, and tons of easter eggs. But being set in Calradia, there aren't many changes besides those, so the gameplay value runs out fairly quickly. 38. Fantasy Calradia This one brings magic and non-human species to Calradia, and once again, that's pretty much it. Though the spells are fairly easy to grasp, and the variety in species is certainly welcomed. But the mod didn't have any goal beyond that, it's a good mod to start playing fantasy mods, and battles are very cool visually, but they are far better fantasy mods we have yet to talk about. 37. Leg. I love gunpowder mods, and this one, set during the Napoleonic Wars, is gorgeous. They nailed the uniforms of the time. But battle-wise, it gets lame quickly. Muskets are super deadly in this mod, but they're also wildly inaccurate. So battles can take a really long time, and the AI is pretty bad, like, he just charges, he doesn't use any formations whatsoever. So it's a really cool looking mod, but the battles themselves are a little tedious. 36. 1860s America 
Similarly to Leg, this is a gun mod, though inaccurate muskets have been replaced with far more reliable revolvers and rifles. 1860s America is pretty ambitious, with the scenery and items to back it up. The battles are also better balanced thanks to the previously mentioned guns, but beyond that this is not a mod that struggles to offer anything valuable. No new quests, kingdom management and siege mechanics are largely the same as native, so once the fun of being a cowboy runs out, so does the fun of playing this mod. It's still good for a solid 10 hours though. 35. Hispania 1200 Another pretty solid mod if you enjoy the place and time period. It has good music and new sound effects as well. I don't really have anything bad to say about this mod, I just don't see any distinctive features that make it stand out. While sieges have been slightly revamped, there are very few changes to the core native mechanics. Most of the changes brought by Hispania 1200 are visual in nature. 34. The Red Wars Possibly one of my favorite gun mods for Warband, the mod took us to Calradia at a time of fascist dictatorships and communist revolutions. The vibe in this mod was simply excellent, and the gun mechanics are pretty solid. The only fundamental problem with this mod is that it was never finished, and besides the new scenery, items and weapons, the rest of the mod is still largely native, so once again, very cool mod, but mostly on the surface. 33. Sword of Damocles this mod was one of the first to greatly expand upon kingdom management, by adding a lot of faith improvements to settlements. I'm also low-key mad that no other mod went as far as this one with how much you can bet in tournaments, or how many recruits you can hire at once. You can make hundreds of thousands of dinars from a single tournament, which helped skip a lot of grind in early game. However, while SOD brought a lot of nice changes, ultimately there's little to no change to scenery or the core mechanics, and the map is simply too big for no reason. And those were the mods that are cool on the surface. Moving on to... good... not my taste. 32. Diplomacy Reloaded This mod aimed to improve upon several areas of Native Warband, but its most distinguished feature was the addition of, well, graphic nudity. I'm compelled to say it succeeded rather well in its aims, but you know, it would have never occurred to me to look for nudity in Warband if someone didn't suggest it to me. So unless that's your thing, Diplomacy is a good mod that can also be safely avoided. 31. Tainted Paths I tried playing this mod as part of my latest mod video, but the new mechanics introduced were so confusing I didn't have time to really grasp them. And even though I played it some more since then, I'm still very confused. This mod basically aimed to redo warband management as well as battle tactics, by dividing your troops not just into infantry and cavalry, but light and heavy troops, and gave you specific commands for specific troops to attack other specific troops. They also revamped the entire warband system with all troops rebranded as army and a starting party size of 40,000. It's confusing as hell, but it still seems to well for that. Out. The mod is ambitious in other ways, such as allowing you to play in two different time periods. Mostly though, the big question is whether or not the changes brought to the mod are worth learning, to which I would say, it depends entirely on you. 30. 180 rows. This is the only mod I've ever played that takes us to feudal China, so if that's a time and place you love, this mod should do the trick. However, for me personally, I just didn't enjoy the mod all that much. The dual feature in battles is pretty cool, but it gets old after a while. There's a central quest, but I found it mostly grindy and dull. However, it's still a pretty solid Chinese mod with cool items and scenery, but I'm just not that big on it. 29. Age of Arthur Any frame that uses Britannwalda as a framework should be amazing, and for the most part, it's certainly true of Age of Arthur. While it keeps most of the mechanics of Britannwalda, it also brought in magic, the legend of King Arthur, along with some unique quests, as well as a whole bunch of features, so overall, this is a really solid mod. However, it made what I believe was a huge mistake by resetting castle food stores to their native amount. One of the coolest features of Britannwalda was the ability to actually starve garrisons out, one of my favorite mechanics brought to any mod ever. And, well, Age of Arthur effectively rendered the whole mechanic useless. If that's not a deal breaker for you though, the rest of the mod is really amazing. 28. The Last Days of the Third Age This is another one of those mods that is huge, ambitious, and very well done. So why don't I like it? Well, for starters, I never really liked Lord of the Rings, so while it did an amazing job of recreating Middle-earth, I don't have any pre-existing fascination for it. But my main criticism of this mod was the decision of using different currencies for each faction, in the form of prestige points. To buy any gear in a faction, you had to raise your relation with that faction specifically. I find this feature to be purely annoying. I get what they were trying to do, I just don't like it. If that's not an issue for you though, and you actually love Lord of the Rings, this mod could be the best one you ever play. 27. Prophecy of Pandor I don't know what else there is to say about this mod. It went from being overly suggested to me in the comments, to me not being all too impressed, and people disagreeing with me with varying degrees of passion. Is Prophecy of Pandor a good mod? Yes. 
new quests, new world, unique items, the possibility of creating your own knighthood. Sure, that all sounds great. Honestly, the only reason I don't like it all that much is because unlike virtually any other mod on this list, I just feel Prophecy of Pandora takes its sweet time in showcasing what it can do. And in the end, what it does offer doesn't appeal to me all that much, at least compared to all the other mods I've played. So, that's really all there is. 26. In the name of Jerusalem. If you're looking for a solid Crusade mod, this one checks a lot of marks. The scenery, the music, the armors, it's as immersive as you can get. The battles are also pretty hardcore and the sieges have been revamped, making for a welcoming change of pace. The only thing I don't like about this mod is the decision to severely restrict any means of recruitment. This mod only allows you to recruit from villages you own, meaning if you're not a lord, you can only recruit mercenaries and taverns. You might think I'm just being very picky, but I'm ranking 42 mods here, so everything counts. Solid mod, I just don't like some of the decisions they've made. 25. Warsword Conquest don't get me wrong, in terms of fantasy, this mod is actually really hard to top. In fact, I can't think of any other mod that was as ambitious with non-human species. It certainly makes for some of the most epic battles you could ever see in Warband. If Warsaw Conquest was ever brought to Bannerlord, damn. So the reason I don't like it all that much personally is because once you get past the, you know, cool species and awesome scenery phase, the mod feels limiting. Selecting one race over another pretty much guarantees that you will not be compatible with most armors to be found in the game. A lot of effort went into making sure that each race has some pretty cool gear, but basically, once you select a race, you're also excluding yourself from experiencing what other factions have to offer to an extent. And sure, it's got dungeons to explore as well as magic. It's a very solid mod for what it intended to do. But once you're past the sheer awe of the visuals, I just find the mod... I don't know, okay? The fact that I'm not familiar with Warhammer in the first place probably doesn't help my case either. So those were the solid mods that just don't quite hit the mark, for me personally. Let's move on to good but overwhelming. 24. Paradigm Worlds This mod defines overwhelming. Set in the future, the world has been ravaged by biowarfare. This mod has everything, from the weirdest failed experiments to zombies and pirates and giant transparent spiders and snowmobiles and anything you could possibly think of. Gameplay-wise, it feels pretty much like native, but every faction, every bandit group, every species and items and accessories, Paradigm World has so much variety in the most chaotic way possible that it might just be one of the most overwhelming mods you can ever play. Whether it's fun depends on your taste though. For me, I just find it hilarious. 23. 1257 AD this mod basically has a monopoly over all medieval Europe mods, covering all historical kingdoms with all their historical weapons and armors, making it one of the biggest mods to play out there. And the ability to start as a ruler, in addition to the new layers of kingdom management, can make it a bit of an overwhelming experience. However, the learning curve is fairly smooth. My only criticism in this mod is the sieges. They made garrisons far bigger, but didn't change siege mechanics in any significant ways, so taking castles is painfully grindy. But besides that, if for you bigger means better, 1257 AD is pretty solid. 22. Between Empires Probably the best gun mod ever, it takes us to Europe from 1860 to 1910. You can in fact choose the time period and then evolve the technology of your faction to get to the latest weapons. So not only does it bring gun tactics to the game and implements them really well, it also brings in artillery and in-depth kingdom management. It can be a fairly steep learning curve to make your way around this mod, but it's absolutely worth it. And the immersion is simply on point. 21. Nova Aedas I've said it before, what I like about this mod is how it gives the player different means to rise to power using prestige, trade colonies, and enterprises. You can build an entire kingdom or enterprise in this mod without ever going to war with another kingdom. However, the implementation can still be confusing and therefore a bit overwhelming. Thankfully, there's some guides out there on how to use some of the features. Let me know if you'd like a guide on Nova Aedas. It's a really good mod if you learn how to play it. 20. Out Caesar, Out in the Hill this mod is THE Roman Empire mod for Warband. Huge map of Europe, most of which under Roman control. You can start as the Emperor and immediately be swarmed in Empire management, from managing constructions, taxes, and domestic policies. You also have to deal with the Roman Senate, as well as going on large campaigns against the Barbarians. This mod defines micromanagement and can therefore be very overwhelming if you don't expect it. However, if you take the time to learn how to play this mod, it might just be one of the best Warband mods ever made. It also implemented a lot of mechanics from Britannwalda, which again, is an instant winner.
Before we go to my top picks, we have some honorable mentions. These are mods that are really good, that I did enjoy, but would not choose as my top picks and don't belong in any of the previous categories. These are Floris Evolves, Diplomacy for Let Them Reloaded, Native New Design, and Banner Page. All of these mods were made with the same goal, to essentially improve upon native Calradia by adding new features, but without changing much of the world or the factions. So which mod you prefer will probably depend on the slightest tweak you prefer most, as they're all equally similar and different in their own ways. For me personally, I do feel I can rank them as shown here. Banner Page seems like the most ambitious of them all, and it recently got an update that secured its spot. But while these mods are solid, what they aim to do is what I like the least about them. I really like a change of world and scenery, so giving Calradia a makeover can be great, but it's still Calradia, and it still gets old. And finally, here comes my top picks. These are mods that either offered a solid one-time experience, or were so much fun to play I just ended up going back to them several times, so here we go. Starting at 15, Age of Sword and Sorcery. Cool map cool renaissance vibe, awesome sword animations, and great implementation of magic, guns, and potions. For what it intended to do, Age of Sword and Sorcery is a very fun mod to play. Magic is very easy to use and there's a lot of variety in the world, including dungeons, hiding unique items. Armors and troops simply look gorgeous. Only criticism, some buggy ass castles and sieges occasionally, but otherwise, Age of Sword and Sorcery was pretty awesome. 14. Asgard, Story of Calradia. Of all the story-driven mods out there, it's definitely the weakest, but what I like about it is the unique items you get from completing the main quest line. These items essentially turn you into a one-man army, as well as allowing you to rise to power over time, becoming a lord in the Kingdom of Swadia. And some of the missions include infiltrating in assassinations too, so it made for some really cool segments. The mod has terrible spelling, but once you see past that, playing the mod was a one-time, really cool experience. Definite recommend. 13. Evlat. In the same thematic, Evlat is also a story-driven mod taking place in Calradia. While the story isn't as engaging, at least initially, the mod heavily expanded on the companions found in Native, giving them key roles in the story with cool interactions. Your character also starts with two children as companions, which is neat, and we also get cool flying carpet dreams. Evlat truly humanized the characters of Calradia in a way I struggle to describe. Just check it out, it's a great mod. 12. Crusades and Jihads. This is another amazing crusade mod, but unlike in the name of Jerusalem, doesn't make recruiting complicated, so it earns a spot in my top picks. Great music, immersive Middle East, awesome huge battles, as well as cool sieges, and a campaign that offers some pretty cool missions. Crusaders and Jihads is a lot of fun, the only thing is, it can be a little buggy. But it's still a solid recommend. 11. Adventure in the East also set in the Middle East, but during the collapse of the Roman Empire, this is also a great story-driven mod that nailed the world it aimed to bring to life. Not much else to say, just play it and find out for yourself. At number 10, Suvarnabhumi Mahayuf. I discovered this one only recently, but immediately fell in love with it. Set during the colonial age in Southeast Asia, this one brings a lot of cultural variety. You can just as easily be a conquistador as a Vietnamese warrior. The most notable feature though is the addition of massive war elephants, which are simply awesome. Overall, this is a beautiful mod that succeeded in everything it aimed to achieve. 9. World of Vaznar this one was recommended to me by its very own creator, Ryndale Blackfire, in the comments of my previous video, so I really wanted to include it in this ranking. And I gotta say... This mod was built on top of Hispania 1200 with the goal of adding fantasy into the mix. And seriously, for a mod that is not yet finished, it's really solid. This mod brings us to the late medieval slash renaissance period, with tons of new items, as well as guns and magic. Magic is pretty much limited to throwable items right now, but it's very intuitive. We can also buy spells from a lich, including necromancer spells, to summon undead soldiers in battle. That's actually really awesome. And because this is based on Hispania, we also have the same scenery, including for sieges, where there are several layers of defenses. Only problem I've had is that it crashes occasionally. However, Rindale is still working on the mod and we can expect more content in the future. Very solid mod, a very nice surprise. 8. Light and Darkness, Heroes of Calradia. Probably one of the best story-driven mods out there with cutscenes to boot, which I haven't seen in many other mods. Much like Evlat, following the questline brings you on the path of native characters and this brings fun interactions with them. The quests are sometimes grindy, but the story is very engaging and is definitely worth playing. 7. Bones of Rangvald. It's a close tie with Light and Darkness, but in terms of story-driven mods, Bones of Rangvald is my favorite because it also checks a few more marks on what I like to see in a mod. Mainly, it takes us outside of Calradia with new factions, more weapons and armors. And I do like the creepy atmosphere and more obvious fantasy setting of Bones and Rangvald. 
The giant spiders are definitely memorable, if you can handle it. 6. 16th Century This month simply impressed me for its sheer size and ambition. You're talking about one if not the only mod to cover all continents in a time period rich with cultures and technologies. You can just as easily be a samurai or a conquistador, a janissary or an Aztec warrior and go to war with the rest of the world. It's just beautifully made and very immersive with its sceneries. If you wanted a mod that covers the entire world and all of the cultures in it, 16th century is for you. 5. Geko Kujo Much like 1257 AD is at the top of Middle Ages Europe, Geko Kujo dominates the samurai genre. Set in Japan, we have immersive scenery, as well as weapons, beautiful armors, and cool fighting animations. The mod also brought in a bunch of some mods, such as Freelancer and Diplomacy, meaning you still get many quality of life improvements in addition to experiencing Feudal Japan. I just love the culture and time period, so this mod has always been amongst my favorite for Warband. For number 4 and number 3, I'm putting together a Clash of Kings and a World of Ice and Fire. Unlike most fantasy mods I've played based on other works of fictions, I'm actually a die-hard fan of the Song of Ice and Fire novels, as well as Game of Thrones, the first four seasons anyway. And both mods did a fantastic job of recreating the world of Westeros and Essos. I can't really pick one over the other, although World of Ice and Fire implemented a lot of features from another fantastic mod I love, but it's also much harder to build a warband in the first place, so it kinda cancels out the bonus. Either mod is amazing, is my point. I can't decide which is better. At number 2, Britain Waldo. Since working on my YouTube channel, I found a new appreciation for Britain Waldo to give it the number 2 spot. It's a hardcore mod, very challenging, but so much fun. Large map, tons of factions, cool weapons and armors for the time period, good kingdom management, it has everything plus the best warband mod feature of all time, the siege gameplay. I just love starving garrisons out using deception, and I don't know why other mods don't implement this feature more. It makes the campaign of Britain Waldo one of the best to play out. Britain Waldo will always be one of my go-tos. And finally, for anyone who's watched for a while, this should not be a surprise. Number 1. Paris No. I bring you back to what I like to see in a mod. Epic battles? Yes sir. Increased battle size as well as adjustable amounts of reinforcement waves means you could have an entire battle in a single round of fighting. Beautiful world and atmosphere? Oh yeah. The world of Paris Snow is well fleshed out, with lots of lore, new factions, tons of new bandit groups, and the soundtrack is just amazing. And there are tons of amazing looking new weapons and armors. And are there new quests? Yes indeed, Paris Snow is a full list of unique quests that reward you with unique items. Ultimately, for my own preferences, Paris Snow is just the best. New layers of kingdom management, challenging world full of variety, but somehow it does not feel overwhelming in the slightest. If I had to choose just one mod to play forever, it would be Paris Snow. And that's about it! So thank you so much for watching, if you made it this far, well... Congratulations! Obviously there are so many Warband mods out there that I could keep making this content for a long time. Will I do? I'm not sure. You guys have to keep feeding me suggestions, which you can do by either dropping a comment below or join the Discord server by following the link in the description. One mod that has been recommended to me several times that I have yet to play is Viking Conquest. And the reason is, it's because it's not actually a mod. It's a paid DLC. But rest assured, it is my plan to eventually buy the DLC and make a full review of it, which you will not miss if you subscribe right now, you will be notified when that video comes out. As of recording this video, the full release for Bannerlord is very soon, on October 25, and as I've said in a previous video, we can expect the mods to get much bigger and much more stable from that point on, so there will also be a lot more content on Bannerlord. In fact, to get an idea of the big mods coming to Bannerlord, you can also check out this video that I made, link in the description. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.